All right, everyone, this is a video I wanted to make. So this is a video by the YouTuber Sajam, I don't know how you pronounce it, about uh, the skill gate and fighting the difficulty. He's made a few videos like this about fighting games and whether or not they're harder than other games. I think he is of the opinion that there really isn't much of a difference between fighting games and other games, and that it's sort of a manufactured thing. I don't think I quite agree with that. I think that fighting games have a few things about them that are different, not really about them inherently, but just the way, uh, about the way they're made right now and where they are culturally right now that makes it so that it happens to be harder for people to get into them. But uh, I'm just going to watch this video and talk about my experience as, a vi as someone who's still a very new player to fighting games. I consider myself uh, a fan of fighting games now, whereas I wouldn't have uh, maybe six months ago. Uh, because, you know, a few things have changed. I mean, I'll probably talk about that in the video, but I just wanted to make a quick reaction to this video and more sort of use this as a jumping off point to discuss some more stuff. Man, oh man. I found a thread on our games, right? This one is so good. And the title of the thread on our games is this. Hear me out. We need a term for games that are in a specific state where only hardcore players remain who dominate in such a way that prevents any new players from being able to enjoy. So, like, I just want to say, I feel like this is just any an issue that any uh, PvP-focused game uh, crashes into eventually if you don't have, like, a really good base game to help new players along. This is always a problem that you have to design for when making a game. You go into the game, and everybody who's playing the game has 5,000, 10,000 hours played. They're all incredibly experienced. There's no newcomers. So I read this thread, and obviously this thread is about fighting games. Like It's all centered around fighting game discussion, right? Except it's not. The example in the thread title is Sea of Thieves. It says, wow, this game has an amazing world. Uh, it's so nice and everything, but everybody's experienced. They're all super familiar with the game. I can't do anything. Second game, it's got to be a fighting game. It's time. Where's Guilty Gear? Here it is. Dead by Daylight. Uh, is the second game listed here. It's got a cool, unique gameplay experience. It's really cool, but then you don't know the meta stuff. You get killed by all the killers. You don't know how to get away from stuff. You just die, all right? But the third game, surely, it's got to be Tekken 7, all right? Here it is. Rainbow Six Siege. You look at the title post here, and you're like, huh. Oh, I'm sorry about that. This is talking about thing. something that everybody is... They always say this is the problem with fighting games, is that everybody is super experienced and... When you get into the game, there's no new players left, right? Everybody's just there, try hard, professional, combo, uh, glue sniffer, and I can't win. So they're trying to come up with a term for when a game is in this state of play. But surely the first comment in this thread must be about fighting games, right? Because this is the this happens to fighting games. Fighting game players tell me, Sage M, other games aren't hard. Fighting games are hard. Fighting games are the only games where when people get into them, they're so difficult and only good players are left, right? Can't happen in other games. Only fighting games. So let's see the first first post. Got to be about fighting games. Huh, it's just about skill gate. All right, this guy, he's talking about skill gate as a term or whatever. You know, that's cool. Let's say Jam brought that up. All right, let's look at the next one. Siege. All right, somebody else brought up Siege twice. How did Siege get brought up twice before a fighting game? That's weird. Gears of War. Oh, that's weird. All right, well, not a problem. I'm sure the next one will be something else, right? Nothing in this one, right? Sea of Thieves, Dead by Daylight. Okay, these are these are these are on the topic of the thread. They won't count. I oh, this one's perfect. I opened up this thread thinking he's gonna be talking about Dota. Wait, Dota or League? How did Dota or League come up before fighting games? I thought MOBAs were the easiest games ever. Everybody told me if you have friends, you just play a MOBA and it's the easiest game to learn ever. Way easier than fighting games. Fighting games gotta gotta be here somewhere. TF2, Quake 3 Arena. Was that seven games? Eight games? I'm just letting him go ahead and make his point here. I'm going to be talking for quite a while after this, so we can just let him ramble on, make his point all the games way. Games we've hit now and no fighting games yet? MMOs, survival games. The entire genre of MMOs and survival games have come up before fighting games? Hmm. But, I mean, all these, these games listed, the things they're describing are exactly what people say a fighting games issue is. Could it be that maybe fighting games aren't the only genre of competitive game that is difficult and when you first start out feels like there's a lot of stuff to learn? Battlefield 4 got brought up. Fighting games, finally. Fighting games, I found it. We scroll all the way down, we found one. Fighting games, right here. They attract people who like mastery. Finally, we found someone who brought up fighting games. I'm happy about that. Oh, here's another comment. Same, dude. Uh, though in Tekken's case, it really is just a difficult game, regardless of the enemy players. It has no tutorial whatsoever, which means off to YouTube to learn basic mechanics. 
Yeah, I watched a video that was like 50 tips for Tekken, and every single one of them was incredibly useful, but totally obtuse. It wasn't easy to learn. But of course, getting one tapped in the head by a dude with a thermal sniper doesn't ha Thermal sniper? Oh, that wasn't about Tekken. That was a... Oh, it's Tarkov. Good bit. Well, well, that, well. That's a good bit, by the way. Video game exists. That's the no thing I remember most from this video when it. I first Everything watched about it. It's obtuse. It doesn't make sense. You just get instantly killed by all the better players. They can beat you with any gun in the game. They can pick up any old gun in the game and beat you. Wow. You got me? Yeah, when I saw this comment in this thread, I... And a devious idea appeared in my head. Somebody in here says, I think there's already a common term used for these games. Dead games. Oh, man. Calling Fortnite and Dead by Daylight and uh, Siege and, you know, Counter-Strike dead games. Pretty interesting thread. Anyway, the reason I brought up this thread in the first place is because oftentimes when I talk about fighting game difficulty compared to other genres, people say stuff like, you know, fighting games are more obtuse and they're so difficult and they don't have tutorials and they're bad at this and they're bad at that. And that's true. We shouldn't let fighting games off the hook. The point I, I'm trying to make though is that these games all struggle with the same things that fighting games do, right? They don't have tutorials or even if they have tutorials, they don't cover a lot. Or even if these tutorials are great, you still need to go to YouTube to learn how to play the game. And the players that are allowed to play in the game are experienced veteran players who know what they're doing and kick the shit out of you when you start. And the only way to get past that is to continue playing the game and get used to it, right? You can just read this thread, and instead of whatever the game that they're talking about is, put a fighting game there in your mind, and so many of the things will sound exactly like a fighting game. I don't like the rhetoric around fighting games. That re Fighting games are so much harder than every other genre. It's impossible to get into them, and they have all these unique things that plague them. Fighting, I feel like people who play fighting games just don't play other games, or if they do, they don't realize how, how much they suck at other games. Fighting game. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk about my own experience here for a little bit because I, I will say I have experienced this a lot with other games, but it, had, it never stopped me from enjoying games the way it did with fighting games. Uh, fi I was not able to enjoy fighting games despite wanting to like them for a long time. It, it took until pretty recently that I was able to like them. And I feel like there's a very specific phenomenon that happens with fighting games that makes this a thing. So first off, I'm going to say uh, I'm bad at FPSs, but I can still enjoy them. I can still enjoy playing them online. Uh, I was able to get good enough to play online because every FPS in the world has like an eight-hour campaign that you can play. I've played, before I even like stepped room in an online lobby with another player, I played uh, like like 40 hours of random COD campaigns or Doom campaigns and stuff like that. And before I ever stepped uh, in an online lobby, I had played hundreds of thousands of hours of COD Zombies mode because I loved that shit. So by the time I had played against any other real people, I had spent hundreds of hours in FPSs. I was comfortable moving around and stuff. Uh, and beyond that, I'd also spent hundreds of hours playing with my real-life friends and, like, shooting each other in multiplayer. And that's an advantage... By the way, this is a big thing we have to acknowledge. I feel like FPSs and a lot of other more uh, other games have the big advantage of just having a lot more cultural relevance, which is kind of just unfortunate. Obviously, like it, you know, Fortnite is not is more culturally relevant than Street Fighter is. It just kind of is, and you're gonna have an easier time finding friends uh, to play Call of Duty with you than you are gonna play Street Fighter. In fact, you know. I, I played Call of Duty with so many people, so many of my friends in real life, and the only person I ever played a fighting game in real life with was my stepbrother. We played Mortal Kombat uh, 11, I think. I played Scorpion. I zoned him out with Spear, and when he tried to jump over my Spear, I teleported in and punished it. Uh, we played that for about five games, and then he quit and never played another fighting game with me because he was tired of losing. Uh... Whereas I can play with, I, I can just play uh, Call of Duty with so many people, and it's just really easy to sit down and have fun playing Call of Duty with my friends. And I think just that gap in cultural relevance means that, yeah, it is going to be harder to learn uh, fighting games for a lot of people because they don't have a group of friends to play with. You know, I, I'm going to be honest, the big difference for me that finally got me to be able to play fighting games and like really be a fan was finding a discord full of people that I felt really comfortable playing with. I think like 
I, I think the biggest thing when you learn a, a game, um, more so than anything, it's just being able to have fun playing it. You know, like I, I went in trying to get good at fighting games so that I could have fun. But you have to, and this is, I think, what a lot of people end up approaching fighting games as. But you have to remember, you, you don't get good at something to have fun. You get good at something by having fun doing it, you know? And I, I'll say, I, I have uh, another really good example of this. Uh, one that I think is very, uh, per, uh, per, I don't know the word, very relevant here. Uh, Magic the Gathering. So I played Magic the Gathering in paper, right? I had no one. I, I had to play against other people. There's no other way to play it in paper, right? So I went up and I played at uh, the local F and M, the uh, local Friday Night Magic, for about two months, going 0 and 3 in every Swiss tournament. Uh, before I started winning a few games, and then I was winning a few games for another several months until I started actually getting able to top eight, right? And the thing was that. I wasn't up there grinding to get good at the game, right? I do that sometimes with Magic now, but I, I, I never did that back then. I was going up there and playing a game I liked with my friends, right? I didn't know any of the people up there at first, but after uh, a week, after like uh, one F&M and a few other days up there, I knew a bunch of the people by name. We were sitting around talking, joking around, having a really good time playing Magic with each other. And so that let me slam my head into that wall. Like, if you want to get good at any game, right? And this is something I think everyone will agree with. You just have to go in there and lose a lot, right? You just have to go and play a bunch of games. You're going to you're gonna lose a lot, but it's fine. Eventually, you'll learn how to play, right? But realistically, nobody will ever do that if they're not having fun in the first place. So you have to find a way to make sure that you're having fun. And that... Is, I feel like a lot of people are able to set themselves up with that, with a lot of other things. Whereas, I feel like fighting games are in a somewhat unique position. Uh, a, you know, what I said earlier, they aren't like FPSs where they're incredibly culturally relevant. You know, a lot of people play them. You can just find any old person, uh, at least I could, you know, back in my day as a kid, play, find so many people to play uh, Call of Duty with and nobody to play Mortal Kombat with, basically. So... That gave me the ability to, uh, to, to to play against other people a lot. And I think another thing is that just the way that fighting games are designed, they they don't really have much single-player content. Because I feel like fighting games have always been very community-based, right? They started off in the arcade, right? So you'd go up to people in the arcade, you know, and you'd play, play a bunch of games. It was a whole, like, community-based thing. Uh, and then arcades died, and they sort of transferred into this online community-based thing. But they're still sort of designed, uh, fighting games in general, very much like they used to be in the arcade. They don't really have much that's different. Like, they, they have the same old story modes and arcade modes and stuff like that. They don't really have a campaign in the same way that, like, an FPS does. Or, uh, God, what, what else is there? Like, I'm trying to think of other competitive games. I guess MOBAs exist, but MOBAs are just, like, kind of a different uh, version of an MMO. And everyone can go and play an MMO uh, and, you know, get better at them. You know, so I feel like the whole community basis for fighting games that was so, such an in-person, like, personal community-based uh, genre. And it's really hard for people to get into fighting games when they feel like they're not a part of that community yet. Uh, that's how I felt for a long time. That's why I kept trying to get in and c kind of bouncing off, you know. It wasn't that people were mean to me or anything. It was just that I felt like I wasn't welcome because I didn't know what was going on. And especially when it was over the internet and it was so, like, anonymous and I, I, I didn't talk to the same person or play the same person more than once a lot of the time. It got to the point where it was just, like, I, I felt unwelcome and, like, I was alone playing them. Whereas, you know, when I was going up to f and I was meeting the same people, I was talking to them a lot, I was, you know, uh, talking about the game with them a lot, I feel like that was probably how it was back when, in the arcade days with fighting games, you would go to the arcade, you'd meet the same kids, you'd all play for hours and hours, you know, spend all your allowance on the, the local SF2 cabinet or whatever. So I feel like fighting games need to pr find some way to make, like, actually good single-player content. Uh, I could go into, like, how I think they need to do that 
a lot at some point. Um, I have a lot of ideas for it, but it's just it's a hard thing to do uh, because fighting games have always been designed for PvP so heavily that they don't re- like I don't think developers have really figured out how to make actually good single player content for fighting games yet. Whereas there are so many great FPS campaigns, there are so many great like MMOs that you can play uh, single player. I don't think there are really any fighting games that have like what I would say is a really fun single player experience. Uh, I'll see if. If Sajam here has anything else interesting to say, you know it's very easy to understand how bad you are at them because you lose. But in these other games, you loot for five minutes and you don't die when you drop in Warzone, and you're like, "I'm the best Warzone player ever," and then you get fucking murdered, and you're like, "Oh yeah." And regardless of what your feelings are about fighting games, I think portraying them as different from these other games I, is incorrect in a lot of ways. They have their differences, but many of the things that plague fighting games plague other games. I mean, I do think he's at some level true, but I do, I do, as I said, I think there is just the difference of um, fighting games. The developers just haven't figured out how to make good single-player content for these, whereas I feel like in a lot of other instances for a lot of these other competitive games, they've cracked that code because, like, especially for, like, FPSs, they were, like, single-player games first. You know, they the first FPSs were all, like, Doom and all these single-player campaigns. It was later that they became competitive multiplayer games. So... Because of that, there's a lot more like actually good single player content for a lot of these other genres where you can spend a lot of time playing and getting like even like a basic handle on the controls. Like here's the thing. I must say, when I first started playing fighting games, like it felt so weird coming from any other game genre. And like th- that's true for a lot of stuff, right? But you know, I think level zero of playing a game is just being able to move your like character around competently, and that takes a long time, you know? And I think good single player content, like not not even not a tutorial. A tutorial it will never be long enough. I mean like just normal actual like a single player campaign that you can play. Having a good fun single player campaign is really important for people being able to learn what like how to move their character and how to like do anything in your game well. And I don't think that m- any fighting game I've played had really had what I would call a good single player experience. Tarkov came up, right? It was the game that I was using as a replacement for Tekken. Do you guys know anything about Tarkov? It's a game that you can play multiplayer, right? You can play with teammates and stuff, but it's it's not like a team built-in game. At the top of Twitch all the time is Tarkov because they have drops in the game, so people watch it. It's incredibly popular. Tarkov is brutal. I can think of very few popular games that are that fucked up. You start in an area, and then you get to go around and loot or whatever, right? And do whatever you're going to do. Find new stuff, get new things, and it persists on your body. And then you have to make it to an extraction point. And you die like that in the game. So you can imagine there's a guy just hiding in a corner of a building, like slowly creeping around, and he just pops you. And you've been looting for 15 minutes, and you just get shot and die and lose all your loot. But it's super popular, right? Despite it being incredibly difficult, despite it having no tutorial, despite it being... Like, the learning curve is brutal. And even if you somehow get some cool loot that that you're really happy with, you need to bring the loot with you back into the wild to try to kill people, and then you just die. At the end of the day, Tarkov is still an FPS, which makes it easier to understand than a fighting game for most players. That's where you lose me, I think. I don't know. I think a lot of people can understand how a fight. Yeah. It's not that it's easier to understand. I'm going to say, like as I said, everyone I knew knew how to play Call of Duty when I was a kid. It's that people just have more experience with Call of Duty. You know, the fact that Tarkov is an FPS means that people have more experience playing games like it. Where Street Fighter, like for a lot of people, the first fighting game they play is the first game they've ever played that's anything like that. Like I know when I first, I think the first playing game, fighting game I ever played was like MVC Three Infinite, and I remember like I, I it looked like kind of like Mario to me, and I was like trying to move my character around. It felt so weird. I was like, what? Why do I press up to jump? That's weird. Like, why, why, why is my character so slow? Why, well, why is everything so stiff and weird Like, as I try and do anything? It, it made no sense to me, right, when I was a kid. So, and, that, and then that's just a lack of experience thing, you know? I feel like uh, for a, a lot of other competitive games um, have the advantage of people just having played them more. And that kind of just means like there's sort of a snowball effect where whatever is popular just kind of gets to stay popular right and then that's sort of something that fighting is gonna have to fight against if they want to become bigger 
in a fighting game, you know that the two characters have health bars. And whoever loses their health bar first dies. That's it. I don't think either are complicated. A lot of people say things about fighting games like, well, you got to learn the motions or you got to learn this or you got to learn that. Or there's like lots of difficult things that you have to get to before you can get into the fighting aspect. When I think about MOBAs or I think about battle royales, I think these games have just a numerous amount of things you have to get through before you get to the core gameplay that everybody wants to get to. You know? Yeah, I, I agree with them there. I remember I, I, I came into LOL without having done anything and I felt like as lost as I did playing any fighting game, right? Like, I was able to understand, like, the basic idea, and the same way I was able to understand the basic idea of Street Fighter, but, like, I, I wasn't able to understand why anything was good or what any of the items did. I wasn't able to understand, like, why I would DP at a certain point versus throw a fireball. Like, I didn't, I didn't get why any of these things mattered, right? And until you learn enough of a game to understand, like, the meta of it, that, that's just going to be how it is, right? Like, so it's that way in Magic, too, you know? New players just don't understand why certain cards would be good versus bad you know it just takes a long time you have to you, you just have to play a lot before you can really understand things and that's just like and you know i feel like fighting games are at a disadvantage just because they're they're very pvp focused and they're so different from a lot of other genres i don't feel like you can get fundamentals just about anywhere else you know i feel like i i feel like they're like you know like someone could even like be more comfortable trying to learn an FP, uh, and yeah, an FPS for the first time because they had played Portal, you know, and gone used to walking around, aiming, playing in Portal, you know. And there just isn't, there really isn't anything else that plays even similarly to a fighting game that uh, I can think of. I think fighting games are a very unique genre of game, and that you know, that, that's given manifesting a lot of problems with them trying to you know grow bigger the core of uh, these games is point and click correct like at their lowest level it's like aim at a guy shoot a shoot him but in reality in like these battle royales we're not even going to make it to shooting yet when you play a battle royale you start and you spawn when you spawn you have to choose where you're going to go how do you know where a good place to go is you literally have zero clue you drop in a spot, you're like, this spot looks cool. Hey, there's a lot of people here. Dead. Uh, here's the thing. Another thing about it, a lot of people know where to drop because they've watched 100 YouTube videos before even playing the game that uh, where the guys have talked about. You know, again, cultural relevance matters a lot. You know, if, if like – if people understand what's going on in the game just through cultural osmosis, they're going to have a lot easier time learning that game than they will if they literally have no idea what's going on. You know, he's assuming that people here have very little idea of how battle royales work, where in reality, I kind of knew how a battle royale worked before I ever even played one, just from hearing people talk about them, you know? And that's just because they were just so big. All right, let me try again. Back into the queue. Okay, let's see here. Where am I going to go now? That place has nobody there. I'm going to spawn there. What the fuck is this gas doing? Dead. They're like, hmm. Okay, I should probably pay attention to the map and figure out where this gas is going to be. And go somewhere where not a lot of people are, but there's going to be some loot anyways. You're not even at the aiming and shooting point. Yeah, again, like all, all that stuff about the zone, most people already knew that before they ever tried to play a Battle Royale game because they'd watched someone else played one, you know? Uh, and cultural osmosis just matters a lot. For these types of, I don't think we can do what he's doing right here and assume that these things exist in a vacuum. You know, maybe in another world where uh, Street Fighter was uh, big, as big as Fortnite, no one would say this about fighting games, you know, or the cultural thing wouldn't uh, wouldn't be there. But we live in this world, and in this world, you know, fighting games are pretty niche, and so you're less likely to have watched a lot or a uh, uh, footage of uh, people playing fighting games, and you're a lot more likely to have. Uh, heard a lot of people talk about PUBG and watch a lot of Twitch of people playing PUBG. And then once you land, you have to figure out what to loot. And when you figure out what to loot, you have to know, is this a good thing to loot? Is this a bad thing to loot? What Am I supposed to pick this up? Or oh, she go. Is this a primary? Is this a secondary? Is this a equipment of some kind? Is this gun better than that gun? I don't know. Infilament brings it up. Like, when we first played PUBG, all of us had played three, four, five, six hundred hours of PUBG and he'd never played. So we would walk up to a body and be like, -ra -ra -ra, take everything, bounce, right? He would walk up to a body and open it up and be like, all right, and pull up, like, the king's scroll. And he'd be like, this man has an assault rifle. Uh, this assault rifle has a few attachments on it, it seems, a couple. 
Besides that, it seems like he also has a pistol of some sort. Uh, I'm not sure of what variety. Let me hold the pistol. The pistol seems like a pistol. I can't give you any other clarification besides that. Let me set the pistol back. Now, when it comes to ammunition, there's a lot. It seems like he has 473 rounds of 556. Five, now, what is my gun? Let me close this real quick. Let me look at my gun. Does my gun take these bullets? 373 rounds of 762. And uh, he's got some heals. He's got a health kit, a syringe, and painkillers. Which is the best? Do I take the pain? Well, drugs are bad, so I'm not going to take the painkillers. I guess I'll take the health kit, right? That seems like it's good. You know what I mean? Like, this is what it's like when you're first playing a battle royale. <laughs> yeah, you look through the body, and you, you look around, and you're literally dying in the gas and your team is 500 million miles away and you're like wait guys i got my gut and you just fall over dead so yeah i mean there there are things you have to get through in the game before you get to the shooting aspect once like i understand why he would make that argument i want to say like when i first started playing fortnite like for fun that never happened to me because i already knew how to play fortnite from uh watching uh, because other people I knew t talked about Fortnite so much, and I had seen, you know, I I'd watched some people play Fortnite on YouTube before that to see what it was like, you know? Uh, and I also just had a lot of, like, cursory knowledge for playing Call, Call of Duty so long, so it wasn't that hard for me to pick up. Do so, you make it to the shooting aspect, the gulf that exists between someone who cannot aim and shoot and someone who's incredibly good at aiming and shoot? The massive gulf here is hard to overstate like it is huge and not only that but the people up here they will also learn how to loot quickly they will also learn what to pick up they will also learn how to drop they'll even figure out the drop mechanics so that they can go the farthest that they can go or fall the fastest they'll know the best places to check for loot they'll they'll know exactly what weapon you have and what uh you know it sounds like just by ear. they'll have all this knowledge of the game and where to stand and what to do and all this stuff over you when you first begin and not only that you drop into a map with 99 other people and you think you're gonna win i think they're all tough and i think this thread is great because if you haven't looked at this thread reading through it you will realize that the things that you find frustrating or difficult about fighting games exist for almost every game that is competitive on the planet and every genre it's all the same thinking we're some different anomaly is to me is just absurd now that being said are there lots of things that fighting games still need to improve on absolutely and so do these games right it's not like these games are fucking not big piles of shit i mean so many of them have so many fucked up weird things with them too in mobas it's so easy to jump in you got nothing to stop you jump in with your buddies you have a great old time I'm like dude have you ever played first of all i don't know who your friends are i've never in my life seen a fighting game destroy a friendship even it can't even begin to fracture a friendship in the same way that a MOBA can just slice one clean in half. It's not even fucking close. <laughs> this is how it goes for more battles. I do Thanks think so fighting games tend to be pretty bad at offering any co-op gameplay. If I want to get new friends and we don't have any way to dunk on people together like an FPS or sure, MOBA. Sure, sure, sure. I agree with or that. But at the same time, at the same time, you can that. directly teach and play with your friends with just the two of you. You don't need more people to play with. You also don't have the experience of like, you guys queue up for a match, your friend gets shot, he goes 3 and 23 and you go 32 and 5 and you guys lose the game and you're like, oh, I was close. Yeah, and your friend's like, this fucking sucks. I don't <laughs> like this at all. I mean, they feel like a burden and they're not having any fun. I go to play Rocket League with Infilament, and he fucking is so good that every match we're getting ra matched up with professional and collegiate Rocket League players, and I'm over here like, oh, ball go fast, me hit ball, and I'm driving the car over there. I'm like Barney Rubble. I'm not even fucking driving the car. My goddamn feet are through the bottom of my fucking car, and I'm yabba dabba do running across the goddamn field trying to hit the ball into the net, and these motherfuckers are on the ceiling doing backflips and fucking... And just like hitting the ball. It's like wanted the ball pew, curves in there and shit. And it's Morgan Freeman. And I'm over here just like in bedrock, just like fucking, how do I hit the ball? Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. So, yeah, I mean, sure, you can play online cooperative with your friends and teach them, but there are other issues with these that you're going to run into that exist. Sure, I agree with you that in fighting games, there is not a cooperative endeavor you can tackle together. But at the same time, Playing as a new player with your friends who are experienced, 
it's, it's sometimes it sucks in other games. What if your friend? I feel like they have better ways of alleviating that, though. Like, for example, there is a PVE co-op mode that exists that uh, can be a good way to ease someone in if they aren't, uh, you know, ver uh, if they don't know what they're doing. Of course, like even that has problems. Like, if you are truly terrible at FPS, it's like literally someone who's never played before. I've played with some people who did not know how to walk in an FPS before. And, like, nothing's going to help you there, you know? Like, they're just going to have to, like, really just sit down and spend some time, you know? So, it again, this, this is all, you know, very relative, and I dropped something, very relative and subjective. Uh, I just feel like, it, it is something, I, I just feel like it's not currently ingrained into uh, the, like, zeitgeist or whatever, how to play fighting games, and it's just, it's, it's really difficult as a new player to find people to play with, find people who it's fun to play with, find, uh, like, a place where you feel like you, like, really belong and are a lot of, and are, you know, having fun with other people, whereas I think I've had a lot of, uh, easier time finding those places for a lot of other games, and, you know, some better single-player content to help people get better at fighting games, that would go a long way, uh, I think, I, I do think that the, you know, FGC has done a good job making places for new players, but, you know, we have to make sure we direct players to the right place, you know, because I remember, you know, I was in the Skullgirls Discord for a while, you know, I was trying to play with other beginners, right? Of course, there's a difference between beginners of Skullgirls and beginners of fighting games, right? I mean, I probably shouldn't have tried to Skullgirls as my first, you know, FG or whatever, but, you know, that was my decision to make. <laughs> but, like, yeah, you know, and... I, I, I also, you know, like he said, uh, you feel like a burden on your, uh, on your teammate when you play call. I felt like a burden on like my opponent a lot of the time when I was like trying to, uh, like in Discord trying to find a uh, a partner to play with, and I was so much worse than them. I felt like I was wasting their time a lot of the time. And like all these people were super nice and super helpful, you know. Uh, it's just you have to you have to find like a, a really good group of people to play with. I feel. To like really have fun with fighting games, and that can be hard sometimes. Um, but yeah, I think the I think the FTC is doing a lot to curb this problem, and I think uh, fighting game developers could do a lot more. Uh, and th that's pretty much my thoughts on it. I think I've said my whole piece here. <laughs>